I was born and raised in Zambia, Southern Africa, one of the poorest countries in the world. And throughout my life, my primary, secondary, and tertiary education, but also um, my formative years growing up in Africa, we were always told that the path to economic prosperity was through democracy. Over the past 10 years, I've visited over 80 countries around the world. And it's become clear to me that people are no longer convinced about democracy and its efficacy in terms of contributing to economic success and human progress. The question that I've asked myself is why are we failing to convince people about the importance of democracy? And to me, the answer is that we are no longer convincing. People like myself who believe in democracy, but also in the importance of market capitalism. And I believe that there are two fundamental problems with democracy today. One is the issue of legitimacy. So this issue that around the world, democratic societies, um, people in, in de democratic societies, people are looking around and they do not think that the electoral votes, um, whether it's through a referendum or through a general election, people don't believe that those, uh, those uh, elections are, are, are free or fair. Um, and indeed, even if they do, they are very skeptical about the results. Um, we know about the situation here regarding Brexit as just one example. But the second thing that's really critically important is that I'd like to address with my solutions is the issue of myopia. The idea that virtually all the economic challenges are long-term economic challenges. They're deeply entrenched and they are structural and threatening to upend the global economy. And yet our politicians are very short-term in their thinking and they're constantly fighting elections and constantly interested in winning those elections with very little consideration for the long-term costs and the trade-offs. But let me start off first by giving you a little bit of flavor for why it is I worry that democracy is today under siege. First of all, voter participation rates are down. In the United States, for example, in the 1960s, voter participation was in the high 60s and even the 70s in some places. Today, voter participation rates in the United States are around 50% for general elections and they're as low as 30% for people who are indigent or low-income households at at least $30,000 per, um, per annum incomes. This is very far from the one man, one vote mantra that liberal democracy has always touted. A second issue is that money has seeped into the political process. Again, looking at the United States, there's a survey that was published in the uh, New York Times a couple of years ago that estimated that only or just 158 families in the United States were responsible for 50% of the political contributions that have been used to, to fund the, um, the president's election in 2016. More fundamentally, there's a deep concern about lobbying and the amount of money that's gone into lobbying in the, in the United States. If you look at the 2000, in 19, uh, excuse me, in 2000 um, the amount of money that went into lobbying was approximately $1.5 billion. Today, that number is almost, excuse me, has over uh, doubled. It's now over $3 billion that goes into lobbying. And this, to me, again, is creating this fundamental problem of where money has seeped into the political process. More generally, political freedoms have been on the decline around the world. According to Freedom House, over the last 10 years, political freedoms all across the world in both liberal democracies and illiberal states has gone down. It's, gone, it's become so extreme that not only are we seeing this trend in places like the United States, but also we are hearing that um, when, when there's um, surveys like the Pew survey and people are asked about their faith in government, we're seeing large increases in dissatisfaction and a lack of belief in government. According to a Pew survey, 80% of Americans do not trust their government to regularly do what is right. A World Economic Forum report has, that was published recently suggests that when citizens around the world have been polled, people do not believe in the democratic process as a means to deliver economic outcomes. In fact, in that survey, the World Economic Forum, they found that citizens believed more or had more faith in authoritarian governments than they did in political systems that are, are more democratic. Just to give you a few more data points in this regard, 
There are, the Economist Intelligence Unit has downgraded the United States from being a full democracy to being a flawed democracy. And a lot of that has to do with what they see as an erosion of the three key pillars of the democratic process, which is the executive, which is the office of the head of state, um, the legislature, which as you know is very combative, um, beyond the combat levels that I believe that the forefathers had expected um, when they tried to create a bit of competition and discussion in, in the political mm -hmm. process. But also there's deep concern around uh, the judicial system, which is the third arm, um, and the real concern that the judicial system actually is not fair and equal, and that um, certainly in the United States there are lots of surveys around this, but also in other places around the world, especially with the rise of anti-immigrant uh, sentiment, a deep concern that there's one judicial system for people who are white and or rich, and there's a different judicial system, criminal justice system, for people who are black, Latino, um, Asian, and from uh, more poor and indigent backgrounds. So taken together, this suite of, uh, of challenges is creating this very unsettling discourse around democracy. And of course, in the background, uh, we know that illiberal democracies, um, in fact, countries that are blatantly non-democratic, such as China, um, have shown economic progress that has been unprecedented and legendary, and have also continued to show uh, a lot of significant improvements in social metrics as well. <laughs>